Welcome to this edition of Therapy Thursday. I'm Sharon Rose Vasnes, and we're with licensed marriage and family therapist Jack Burke. And we spend a lot of time, Jack, during this segment talking about major decisions mm -hmm. and big events. And this week we're talking about the little conversations. What do you mean by that? Well, the little simple conversations we have at home. Last night was probably a good example for most people. You know, we probably all got home a little later than usual. We struggled on the roads. And you walk in the door and somebody says, hi, honey, how was your day? It's got to be one of the nicest questions that go on in a relationship. Let a me simple ask you statement. This, hmm? Yeah, how was your day? But, but it has to be a genuine question, doesn't it? Because a lot of times, it's like we ask each other, how are you, without any real expectation of finding out how the other person is. We just expect them to say, oh, I'm well, and move on, right? That's a very big deal, yeah, because we do a lot of things that are just kind of linguistic kind of markers. How you doing? Good. How you doing? How about the Red Sox? Huh? You know, they're just <laughs> exactly. marker conversation. But when you know, the thing that makes it important is, A, that somebody's listening. But you think there's, for me, there's like three components to it. Okay. One is that you feel cared about, you know, and not alone. So you come in, you don't feel alone because somebody stops to say, how was your day? And actually listens to your answer. And that's a very big thing, feeling cared about. You know, we put a lot of energy into that. And, you know, we, we have uh, tons of romances and movies that are all about the idea of feeling cared about. And another one would just be feeling like you're not alone. You know, you come in and someone says, hey, how was your day? It's that idea that you matter, you know, that you're not alone, which is a very big deal. Even if we're introverts, I'm somewhat of an introvert, but I still need somebody in my life. Mm -hmm. I need that person. There's a comedian who does uh, some fun stuff about aloneness, and a lot of good comedy reflects real truth. And he talks about even in the worst prison in the world, you know, the meanest and nastiest prison you could imagine, the worst punishment we could give someone is solitary confinement. You can't go out and play with the other murderers today. You know, when you're grounded, and <laughs> yeah. you think, oh, that's a terrible punishment. Yeah. yeah. So, well, and it was interesting. We, you know, we've been doing this series on our broadcast on the Morning Report mm -hmm. about, you know, five things you need yeah. to know and, and different aspects of life. And Lee took on heart health and studies showing that loneliness is one of the biggest um, risk factors for, for, for heart disease. So that ties right into what you're saying here, is that it, loneliness is, is, is crushing. You know, that, that actually, I mean, one of the original studies was that you're less likely to have a second heart attack if you go home to a living creature. And that there's a lot of research about pets, and, but like having somebody mm. there saying, hey, how was your day? Even how better. was the ride home? How did you do with that? Okay. Expressing concern. Because the third thing, most of us will compare ourselves, which is a bad thing to do, but you know, we're not all billionaires. We didn't all launch rockets this week or, or invent some brilliant technique. Really, other people didn't do that? Because I did all of those things. I meant to. I, yeah. I was going <laughs> oh, with my okay. off week. <laughs> Intentions. And you know, but that somebody cares to listen to your day. Mm. That, that it matters, that what happened in your day was, you know, the, the issue you had with that, that clerk or that thing you were trying to fix at work, and that somebody took the time to remember that about mm. you. That it doesn't have to be a big deal, it's just life. Sharing but someone a caring life about your business about yeah. makes you feel validated. Okay. You know, for some people it's easier, too. I mean, some people are natural venters. You come in and that person, oh, you're not going to believe my day. This happened and this happened this happened, but then they're absolutely done with it. The other kind is called an evaporator that might have to think about it for a little bit, chew on it. But they can be, they can be trained to, you know, remember to share something from your day. Mm. That's actually, our personal styles aren't the biggest issue with this kind of simple conversation. The biggest issue is distraction. And I put this book up here too, it relates to that topic. The thing we struggle with most is what distracting lives we lead. Isn't that the truth? You, know, you think of yourself as a parent, you come home at night and there's supper to cook and somebody needs help with homework, somebody needs a ride somewhere, somebody needs clean clothes from all the phones ringing, your phone's vibrating, there's emails you got to respond to, and we can lose sight of reconnecting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it doesn't even have to involve kids. Kids certainly add another layer to it, but I would imagine this is just important for couples without children as those with children. It may even be a harder pressure because single people may actually, or couples that don't have children, may actually be busier and find themselves more caught up in their Facebook. I know it sounds crazy <laughs> if you're a parent, <laughs> but that we can get so caught up in the minutia of our electronic digital lives mm. that we lose touch. Mm. And so it's nice to create a policy or a plan 
like to say, hey, the first 10 minutes of my getting home is adult time. Don't ask me any questions. I'll give him my full attention in 10 minutes. But when he first gets home, it's me and mom need to talk. Mm. And we have a few minutes. And when you create that kind of ritual and protect it, it's a little thing. But like in a song, it's the little things that make a house a home. You know, that feeling that someone's going to listen to me and we have a few minutes to check in. Otherwise, we're dependent on, you know, late at night when our heads are getting wobbly and we're starting to go to sleep and we want to have that conversation, but mm. we're fading. Yeah, yeah, to make it a priority and make sure it happens every day. And it occurs to me, too, that doing this and putting it into practice might eliminate some of those times where you say, I know I told you because you're setting aside that time to concentrate on each other and turn off the TV and, and have the kids do something else and put the phone away for a minute to actually focus you on know, the other person. it's actually a hard challenge and people could take it as a challenge to try. To say, okay, I'm gonna set aside 10 minutes in our relationship today and we can't do business. Business is, what time are they getting out of practice? Are you gonna pick them up tomorrow? Hey, is my car going in for tune-up on Friday? We can't do business, so we say, so what's going on for you? Yeah. 10 minutes, and it's a challenge if we've gotten out of the habit. Bet it is, bet it is, but worth, worth the effort. It really is, it's that stuff that makes us feel cared about, wanted, and I know it sounds sentimental, which isn't a bad word, but it does make a house a home. Mm. To feel somebody cares, how was your day? Reconnect, all right, Jack, thank you very much. Love this idea, gonna put it into practice. We'll see you next week.